ever since I was young, I guess about as far back as I can remember, I've always liked vehicles. I like cars, trucks, all kinds of things like that. And I guess you could say as I've gotten older, the problems got a little worse. My family can attest. I'm always dragging in some car or some truck, working on things, making trades. One of my major weaknesses are Jeeps. I don't know why Jeeps aren't that good of quality. They break down a lot, and all kinds of things. But I've always liked Jeeps. They're really versatile. There's a lot of things you can do with Jeeps. You can take the doors off. You can take the tops off. I've always just thought they were pretty cool. One of the things, you don't see it much anymore, but you used to see all the time the spare tire it had a cover on it. And you'd see all kinds of different cool logos and sayings on, on those spare tire covers. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. I just put down some examples of, of different things that maybe I've seen variations of this. I've never seen a Wilson, but that was pretty cool, I thought. So uh, that, that would be pretty neat. But all these things, they're sort of interesting, the different sayings and things that you can see from Je on Jeep uh, spare tire covers. And Ken, uh, a while back, her and I were debating on, on some Jeep logos and things like that. And for me, one of the clear winners for a Jeep logo is this. Not all who wonder are lost. Uh, I've always really liked that saying. Uh, I just think that's a, it's a really neat saying. Not all who wonder are lost. I think that sort of sums up, you know, the traveling, the adventurous, the exploring attitude that, that a lot in the Jeep community share. But as I've thought about that question, about that statement, it, it begs the question, if not all who wonder are lost, who then is lost? At what point of wondering would you consider yourself being lost? You know, in the Old Testament, the children of Israel, they wandered for 40 years. Were they lost? It's often said that we're wandering here in this life, wandering through this life. We sing a song sometimes about strained pilgrims, or in other words, lost travelers. Yet, we, and yet some of us are wandering, and we're wandering lost through this life. So that's what I'm wanting to talk about this evening. I want to ask the question, Who's lost? I hope to explore this question by asking four more questions. First, I want to ask, what's it mean to be lost? Then we're going to look at how we become lost. How do we know if we're lost? And finally, we want to see how we find ourselves. So that's what we're going to do really quickly tonight. Let me again join in the welcome with, from Adam and say it's good to see everybody here tonight. It's glad to be here. As most of y'all know, public speaking is my thing. <laughs> it's my thing that I dread the most in life. It's my thing I try anything I can to get out of. But Adam, several months ago, he had me in the back and had my arm twisted. <laughs> Man, May got here really fast. I cannot believe it. And at least he's happy that I'm up here tonight. I'm not sure anybody else is. Uh, tonight, obviously, there's not going to be any earth-shattering or, or groundbreaking uh, things that I speak of. But I do hope that we can all just think of some thoughts and we spur some thoughts of God's Word and how our relationship is with God. And hope we can think of some things that maybe we haven't thought about or in different ways. Tonight, my intentions are just to speak the oracles of God, to speak from his word, not adding to or taking away. And if you find me to do that in either case, I'd appreciate it if you come to me after I get down out of here and, and let me know so we can make corrections. We want to first, uh, let's begin by seeing what it means uh, to be lost. Let's first define loss so that we're all on the same page, uh, as it can have several ideas behind it. The first one I think about, and we all probably think about, is that we're, we're not knowing our whereabouts. If you don't know where you're at, you could be considered lost. But it can also mean that you're just not able to find where you want to be. You can't find your way. If you're unsuccessful, that could also be a loss. Um, something that's no longer in existence, or has vanished, or spent, such as the loss of time, the loss of life, we would consider that being a loss. Ruined or wasted. 
we again say there was a loss there. From a physical standpoint, I think we all, all these ideas, we can see that and we can understand that. But what about from a spiritual perspective? I think these ideas would all apply in a spiritual sense, but it actually goes a little further. Um, the Greek word, and I'm not going to try to pronounce that, but the Greek word for lost actually means destroyed or utterly killed. To describe a person as a lost in a spiritual sense indicates more than being turned around, misguided, or confused. It means their soul will be utterly destroyed. Matthew 10, 28 says, And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Jesus gives us this warning that the lost should fear God and his power to destroy their soul. Whether or not our soul is lost is the most important question that there will ever be. What was the purpose of Jesus coming to this earth? What was his reason for coming? What was his mission? Luke 19.10 says, For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Jesus tells us here that his mission was to save the lost, to seek the lost and save them. We see how serious of an issue this is to know if we're lost or not. What does it mean to be lost? If we zoom out and we look at that from a broad view, to be lost spiritually would be anyone who does not have Christ as their Savior. Without Christ, our soul is in a lost condition. We want to be clear on this point, how important this point is. Jesus says again in, in Luke 19, or in Luke 9, 25, what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed? We're lost. There's nothing more serious than to be lost spiritually. There's absolutely nothing worth being lost. What's it mean to be lost? To be lost means to lose everything. So obviously, no one wants to be lost. And I'm confident when I say that everyone here tonight doesn't want to be lost. We want to get to heaven. We all know where we want to be. But that's all, not always enough. In my work, the largest portion of my day is spent inspecting septic systems for new homes. And our camp, we, we cover 10 counties. It's larger than Rhode Island. We, we like to make jokes, but it's, it's pretty large, a lot of land, a lot of back roads, a lot of country in between these roads. Most of the time on the new houses, they don't have addresses as of yet. So we're relying completely on the homeowners or the contractors' directions on how to get us there. To say the least, that can be challenging. People don't always give good directions. And I'm, when I'm out wandering, usually on a daily basis, driving up and down, back and forth, looking for this new house that I can't see, I'll pull over and I'll be trying to get cell service or look at some maps or something, trying to figure out where I'm at, where I need to be. And some good Samaritan will pull over, roll down the window, and what's the question they ask me? Are you lost? Instantly, I take offense. No, I'm not lost. I know exactly where I'm at. I'm in Jabez. I'm in Blue John. I'm somewhere way out in the sticks. I know where I'm at, but I just can't find where I want to be. I just can't find where I need to be. If we think back to our definitions that we started with, though, even if we know the area, even if we've been there dozens of times, if we can't find where we want to be, we're considered lost. Let's keep that in mind as we ask our second question tonight. How we become lost. Now obviously, there's many, many ways to become lost. Like Bubba telling Forrest about shrimp, how to fix shrimp, that's an endless conversation. The world dreams up more ways every day how they become lost. But tonight, I don't want to focus on those in the world, those outside these walls. I want to focus on us, us sitting here, those that want to go to heaven. I want us to realize that just because you're sitting here this evening, that doesn't mean you can't get confused. We can't get misguided. It doesn't mean we can't get lost. Even at the point where we're unable to find heaven. So let's think about a few ways that sometimes even church-going people can get confused as we search for heaven. First, we confuse being with God's people with being God's people. Don't get me wrong, 
we should want to be around faithful Christians as much as possible. It's a huge encouragement, a huge blessing. It strengthens us. However, and, and while your Christianity may influence me, may strengthen me, I don't get credit for it. We've always heard that expression, guilty by association. And that does hold true many times. But we can't assume innocent by association holds true. Just because we worship, we socialize, and we're continually with God's people, that doesn't necessarily make us one of God's people. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for, for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. We won't find heaven on the coattails of others. We need to keep that in mind. We each one has to face our own judgment of our own deeds. Next, let's not confuse knowing the truth with obeying the truth. Many of the world know the truth. Even some atheists know the truth. In James 1.22 it says, But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Listen how the uh, common English actually translated it. It says, hearers that mislead themselves. I'm afraid there are many that are misleading themselves, not only in the world, but in churches this evening. Lastly, people can confuse being like Christ with being in Christ. Again, don't misunderstand. Clearly, we strive each day to be like Christ. He's our example of what we try to follow. He's the pattern that we uh, pattern our life after. We need to strive to be like Jesus as much as possible. However, being present in church, being a good moral person, even being a full of good deeds is not enough. We're on the right road. We're close. And we're close, but that's not where we need to be. We have to be in Christ to get to heaven. Only if we're in Christ can we be redeemed and forgiven. Ephesians 1 and 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Notice it says, in him. Galatians 3 and 26 tells us, For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. So how is it, so how is it we get into Christ? Well, the very next verse in this passage tells us that. Verse 27. For as many as you who were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. John 3, 5, Jesus answers, I assure you, unless someone is born of the water and of the Spirit, it is not possible to enter the kingdom of, heaven, of God's kingdom. We all know where it is we want to be. We all know where it is we want to go. And the good news tonight is that we're on that right road. We're in church on a Sunday evening, talking and thinking about God's Word. But let's make sure that we're all taking the necessary steps and following the necessary instructions on how it is we get there. So we don't end up on the right road and oh so close, but lost. This here is Malou. He's a 50-year-old Turkish guy. Last fall, Malou went for a walk in the nearby forest uh, next to his house. His wife reported him missing when he, she couldn't contact him after several hours, and he didn't come home that night. The next day, Malou was still just walking through the forest for some reason when he ran into a team of first responders and some locals who had formed a search party. They were looking for a missing person. Malou, being a nice guy he was, decided to help them with their search. He helped for hours and hours, several hours in fact, until another part of the search party, he heard them hollering somebody's name. It was his name. He was actually searching for himself. Can you imagine? Imagine being so clueless that you're lost, that you're in your own search party. And you can't make that stuff up. And that brings us to our third question tonight. 
How to know if you're lost. As silly as that story was, I'm afraid there's a lot of people out there wandering through life and they have no idea they're lost. To the contrary, many people think they're right where they need to be. And sadly, all of us know people in that case. But just as the last point that we made, we're not talking about those out there in the world this evening. We're trying to think about us in here and where we're at in our spiritual walk. Mark 2.14, and as he was talking about Jesus passed by, he saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him, and Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at the table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners were reclining with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. And the scribes of the Pharisees, when they saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, said to the disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Other accounts of this say they complained. They grumbled. They criticized Jesus for eating with these sinners, these lost sinners. Wasn't these Pharisees missing the whole point? Didn't they realize that they too were lost that they too needed Jesus just as bad as the tax collectors? You know, Jesus actually said a whole lot about the lost. In Luke 15, we see three parables that deal, deal with the lost there. We have the parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the prodigal son. And we're not going to go through these parables. They're all really familiar with us, to us. <coughs> But something I'd like for us all to think about tonight is where were all these things right before they were lost? The lost sheep, he was with the shepherd. The lost coin, with the homeowner. And the prodigal son, with the father. Being confused, being mistaken, being lost, can happen to anyone, including those who let their guard down because of their safe and their comfortable stations in life. There are several verses in the Bible that are chilling that makes us really pause and think. One of them, 2 Thessalonians 2.11, this is why God will send them an influence or a strong delusion that will mislead them so that they will believe lie. It says they will believe what is false. How terrible is it to believe a lie, to believe what is false? So how do we know if we're in our own search party? How do we know if we're lost? The verse just above this one, it gives us that answer. Verse 10 says, because they have refused to love the truth that would allow them to be saved. It's God's truth. His word and his word alone that will tell us where we stand and what our relationship is with him and where we're headed. And for those that refuse to believe it, they're headed towards destruction, as it says there in the previous part of that verse. Our society today, our country today, truth is under attack. And it's not just God's truth, but it's all truth in general, isn't it? Everyone now gets to decide for themselves what their truth is. How scary and how dangerous that is. Let's remember, though, Hebrews 13, not second Hebrews, but just Hebrews. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's law, his truth, it doesn't change. How do we know if we're lost? By honestly comparing our lives to the truth the Word of God. Each year, uh, Robbie Bellwood and I, we try to go on a hike, and this year we're hoping to, to do a small section of the AT. And for those that don't know, the Appalachian Trail is the longest trail in North America. It's almost 2,200 miles. For, covers 14 states. And every year there's hikers that try to do the entire thing through hikers. And there's actually thousands that try to do the entire thing in one year. Every year, about three to four people die on that trail. 
Now they die from different things, some heart attacks, maybe some falling off cliffs, bears, I, something. And some, they simply get lost, which leads to their death. And I've always wondered why they didn't just stop when they get off trail, when they stop, turn around, and go back to where they know the trail is, where it's clearly marked. Instead, though, they just continue deeper and deeper into the forest until they're hopelessly lost. If they'd only acknowledge that they might be lost, stop, turn around. But the problem is, if you're not lost, why would you stop? Why would you turn around? As with any problem we face in our life, the first step is admitting we have a problem. You have to be lost before you can be found. Now, until now, we've sort of just think, thought about the, the lost part of it. We want to change gears. We want to ask ourselves, how can we find ourselves? And the first step is we need to acknowledge we can't do it alone. By ourselves, we are lost. Jesus says in John 15, at the end of the verse 5, he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. We must realize we need Jesus. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you're here this afternoon and, and you're not a Christian, you need Jesus. If you're here this afternoon and you are a Christian, you need Jesus. If you're young, if you're old, if you're in between, we all need Jesus. If we're to keep from getting turned around, from getting confused, from getting misguided, from getting lost in this life, we need Jesus. We have to be looking to Jesus. Matthew 10, uh, verse 39, Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What's that saying? What's most important to you? Where is it that you place your value in this life? On temporal, physical things? For the everlasting life to come. Romans 3.23 tells us that we've all sinned and we've fallen short. A few chapters later, we see the wages of that sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in, Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus our Lord. You don't want to be lost? You want to find ourselves? Jesus is the answer. I used to always find it funny when the kids were really small and they were in Bible drill class. You ask a small kid a, a Bible question, 99% what's, what, what, what's their answer going to be? It's Jesus. No matter what you ask, they just say Jesus. The thing is, they're right though. Jesus is the answer. He's the answer for all of us in this building tonight, for all those in the world, wherever they are. We have to follow Jesus. We have to follow him in this life to get to the next. He's the only way we'll find ourselves, find ourselves on the right path and the right side of eternity. Not all who wander are lost. Great Jeep slogan, terrible life motto. We should pray that none of us are just wandering through this life, moving from one day to the next, from one adventure to the next, from one phase of life to the next. There's so, so many people that are lost, totally unaware of their lost condition, feeling safe because of their religion, and they're lost all still the same. If we don't want to be one of those lost, we must realize we need Jesus. We have to be willing to do an honest evaluation of where we are in life. We need to be in Jesus. We need to be one of his people. We need to obey the true word of God. We need to be looking to Jesus every day to guide and direct our footsteps. So last question that we'll have this evening. This evening, Are you lost? If you're here and you've started down the right road, but you've wandered off track, if you've, for whatever reason, wandered back into this world, stop, turn around, repent, come back into God. Realize that if we confess our sins, he is just, faithful and just to forgive us. Or maybe you just need the prayers of the brothers and sisters here. 
help strengthen you on your journey. We can help you with that too. If you're here tonight though, and you're not a Christian, don't put it off any longer. No tomorrow is not promised. And recognize, currently you are lost. Come to Jesus while you have time. On the screen, it's the steps of salvation. The steps you need to take this very night so that you can be found, so that you can start down that right road and follow Jesus to heaven. So if anyone has a need of any way tonight that we can help you with, we just want you to come forward as we stand and as we sing.